I want to uh, introduce or share with you results from our uh, individual participant data meta-analysis on attachment networks with mothers and fathers uh, on language. So I'll talk a little bit about attachment dyads and language competence, move to the triadic level uh, and why we think it's important, and then share the results and end with a very brief uh, discussion. So what do we know about attachment diets? Theoretically speaking, uh, the idea is that insecure and disorganized attached children may be limited in exploring their environment simply because they are existentially distressed. They have to monitor potentially more than secure children. Where is the caregiver to which I can go to? And if I can't, I have to make sure that I take care of myself. This is very distressful. And with that state of mind, it's harder to explore the environment, language included. Uh, and that could be exploring their environment with the parent, but obviously with peers as well as with inanimate objects. Even reading a book can be a risk in an environment where you're not sure you can go to someone at times of need. So all of this might be quantitatively more available to secure children compared to insecure and disorganized children. Empirically speaking, we know of the two meta-analyses that Audrian discussed, the first by Marinos in 1995, and then the robust update by Audrian that shows indeed insecure attached children tend to have uh, lower uh, uh, language competence scores compared to the securely attached children. And that was replicated also by Pasco um, and Jay Belsky um, some uh, 20 years ago in the NICHD study showing that secure children had better receptive and expressive language competence at age three after being classified as secure at around age uh, 12 months. And cool studies also showed in RCT, RCT trials that using the attachment and uh, biobehavioral catch-up or the ABC interventions, children who went through that intervention, which is attachment-based intervention in the sense that it higher sense of maternal care, had a better receptive language competence post-intervention compared to those who did not go through this intervention. So we definitely know that on the dyadic level, child mother, also child father, as old Rian showed, uh, tend to have uh, a significant influence on language competence skills. But 35 years ago, Marinos van Eijendorn already stated that an optimal caregiving arrangement consists of a network of more or less stable attachment relationships between a child and several different caregivers. And studies, anthropological studies, such as the one run, run by Ivy on Effie infants in, in, in uh, the Congo showed that infants who had more caregivers by the first year tended to actually survive in higher chances by the end of the third year. So evolutionary speaking, multiple caregivers are essential to survive. So uh, in 1992, uh, Marinos van Eijendorn and uh, Avi Sagishvarts took this ecological, or I would say more ecologically valid idea and proposed the integrative hypothesis, according to which attachment to both mothers and fathers jointly predict socio-emotional outcomes better than attachment uh, to one caregiver. And they stated a paradox. How can attachment be predictive of socio-emotional development if the child is attached in different ways to different caretakers? Now, the epitome of this paradox would be thinking about children who are securely attached to one parent, which we would think about as optimal or setting them in an optimal trajectory towards specific outcomes, but also insecure attachment to another parent, which might be suboptimal trajectory uh, towards specific outcomes. So, uh, and we know that children develop simultaneous and independent attachment patterns to multiple caregivers, including mothers and fathers. So what are we, what are we to make of these children? Children come into the world, they are attached to mothers, but that's not the end of the story. They then get attached to fathers. And that creates really, instead of on the binary secure and secure level, instead of two groups, four groups of children, those who are securely attached to both parents, secure, secure, those who are securely attached only to mothers, but insecure attached to fathers, SMIF. The other way around, IMSF, and those who are insecurely attached uh, to both parents. Now, when we want to make sense of how these different groups differ or not on uh, the average language competence scores, we have to take stock of the studies that looked at it historically. Uh, we take a look, at, and, and Sherry helped me here with uh, your amazing uh, cascade uh, data set. Um, and to make sense, that, that's, that's uh, numbers that are updated as per last year. Um, so this is just by approximation. If you look at number of children that were assessed through the strength situation paradigm, only with mothers, we're talking published results, we have more than 20,000 children and ongoing. If you take a look at children who were, and again, published results on children that were assessed with mothers and fathers, 
it's nearly one tenth of that, which is very little. Now it becomes even smaller when you look at specific outcomes. If I ask you how many children who were assessed with mothers and fathers have published results on language competence, you'd all know by now. We don't know anything about attachment networks and as, as association with language competence. Okay, so we need IPD meta-analysis because we simply don't have enough data uh, published to run a traditional meta-analysis on the subject. So what do you do? You talk with Mariah Verhagen and Carlos Schungel and you ask them, can we join? Can we do something together? There is a question that we are interested in and they would most probably, if they think it's valid, they would say, yes, come join, let's do it together. And so we developed the collaboration on attachment to multiple parents and outcome synthesis. And we basically started asking authors to share their data with us uh, on the individual participant data level, such that we can take the data on children that were assessed with mothers and fathers and reconfigure it into the four groups of interest, secure, secure, insecure, secure, insecure, insecure, and so forth. And that would allow us also to collect specifically language competence outcomes, which quite interestingly, a lot of researchers collected, almost none of them actually published on. And I, maybe, maybe the amount of people who sit here today is a testament to that. There's something about language that is unclear how interesting it is maybe in attachment research. I would argue that it is, but in any case, there is data out there. We just need to use it and publish and see what's going on with it. Having this data also allows us to standardize and harmonize this uh, outcome, which we'll talk more about uh, in one of the panels tomorrow. Uh, Marai Verhaha is the chair uh, for this panel. So what did we find? Before that, we came to this study with an a priori hypothesis. Uh, and uh, basically we developed, uh, Avi Sagish Bartz uh, and I in 2018 published a paper with different models, integrative models, that briefly speaking, uh, depict uh, different relationships between the different groups. I'll go very briefly through this model because this is the model we hypothesized to be corroborated in this study. Additive horizontal, why additive? Because the more secure attachment, the better language competence we'll find. That's the hypothesis. So two secure attachment is better than one, is better than none. And we also hypothesize this to be horizontal in the sense that if you look at the two middle groups of children who has one secure attachment to one parent, but not the other, we would not expect significant difference between these two groups. And we did the same as Carlo initially suggested with disorganized versus non-disorganized group, okay? So we dichotomized it on secure, insecure, and disorganized, non-disorganized. We ended up with seven studies, uh, which is, uh, again, very limited amount of studies and 719 uh, children. And we ran a multi-level analysis here to account for children within studies. The mean age of the children in the first strain situation paradigm with any of the parents was about one year and a half. And about two years plus, uh, on average, a language competence assessment was done. Very non-representative sample with mostly white children and parents that are highly educated and all biological. Uh, attachment patterns were assessed either through the strain situation paradigm or through a modified SSP to adjust for later ages. So that some researchers assessed attachment post 18 months. And language competence was assessed uh, with norm reference performance-based assessments such as the WISC and the WIPSI and so forth. And these are the results. When you look at the secure and secure level, you can see, and the numbers at the bottom of the bars are the sample size within each group. So those who are securely attached to both parents had significantly higher language competence scores compared to those, compared to all groups, really. Um, and those who were securely attached to only one parent, either with mom or with dad, had significantly higher language competence compared to the insecure, insecure groups. Okay, so in that regard, the additive horizontal model was corroborated. Um, I should say that we ran equivalence testing to make sense of uh, whether indeed we can call the two middle groups equivalent. And the equivalence testing was actually non-significant, but the P was 0 0.06. So that means really that with a few more children in any of these two groups or both, we will probably be able to conclusively say there is no difference between those who are securely attached only to moms and those who are securely attached only to dads when uh, predicting language competence. Similar results found on the disorganized uh, versus organized level. Children who were non-disorganized or organized with both parents, that could be also insecurely attached, but non-disorganized with both parents had significantly higher language competence scores compared to all other groups. And here again, we found non-significant differences between uh, those children who were disorganized only with dads 
and those children who were disorganized only with moms. Again, we ran equivalence testing here. Again, the equivalence testing was non-significant, which suggests we need higher sample size in order to be conclusive about these results. So somewhat uh, of a corroboration for the additive horizontal model, given that we don't have kind of the nice dose response relationships. So quick discussion, it's always better to be pretty and rich than ugly and poor. If you are securely attached to both parents, you're probably on average, you have higher probability to have higher language competence at one time point later on. And those who are non disorganized with both parents have higher probability of having higher language competence scores compared to those who are disorganized with both parents. It's highly likely that being securely attached to mothers or fathers or non-disorganized with mothers or fathers have similar effects on language competence scores later on. And including both parents is very essential because it gives us a lot of information to know whether you're securely or insecurely attached to mothers or fathers, but it gives us more fine-tuned information to know what uh, security of attachment pattern you have with the other parent. And that uh, extends our previous results on internalizing and externalizing behavioral problems there, we found also that uh, it's better to be pretty and rich. If you are securely attached to both parents, you most probably, you most likely have lower internalizing behavioral problem T scores compared to those who are insecure, insecure. And on the left, right hand side, you will see that those who are non disorganized with both parents have significantly lower externalizing behavioral problems compared to those who are disorganized, disorganized. And here again, non-significant difference between children who have one disorganization with the parent, but not with the other. And the same with secure versus insecure. So we know by now that attachment networks are associated with language competence. We know that attachment networks are associated with behavioral problems. And we also know that a language competence is also associated with behavioral problems. And that calls, of course, for future studies on longitudinal studies, potentially many lab studies that looks at attachment networks longitudinally, and as a predictor of the bidirectional association between language competence and behavioral problems. And with that, I want to thank everyone who attended today. And everyone is part of collaboration of attachment to multiple parents and outcome synthesis. Thank you.